Okay, guys. Uh, Marcos is going to continue with his uh, second talk. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. So, today is the second part of this uh, mini course on LCK locally conformity Keller geometry, only groups. So, let me do a brief uh, review of what we did yesterday. So it was uh, about the definition of LCK metrics. So G was a Riemannian metric. Sorry. Riemannian metric. So we also define what the complex structure means. It's only money for M, right? So uh, it was uh, an endomorphism of the tangent space with some uh, integrability condition. Integrability condition. If you remember, there was a tensor that has to be zero. So something with the yeah, X, Y, J, X, J, Y, and J, J, X, Y, X, J, Y. So that was a complex structure for us. And with these two ingredients, we have a, what the Hermitian structure is. So it was the metric, the complex structure, and the compatibility condition between them. What else? Uh, so yesterday, well, with G and, and the complex structure, we can define the second fundamental form just using the metric of the complex structure. So for some author, you can also find in some books, papers, uh, the definition of omega in the in the other way, just with the j at the back. So you need to pay attention that there are some minus around when you define the the leaf form. But yeah, both are are fine. So in our case, we are doing with the j in the first part. Okay. So what else? So we define what the Keller matrix means. So the fundamental form has to be close. So the omega equal to zero. <clears throat> then we define finally what the locally conformity Keller matrix means. So the omega is not zero, but is a multiple of itself. So it's theta which omega. Theta is the one form. Sorry. Form is called the Lee form. The Lee form it has to be close. And in the family of locally conformally Keller uh, metrics, so we also define a, a very nice subfamily. So the family of Weismann, Weismann uh, manifolds. So what it means was LCK, so LCK plus some condition on the Lee form, which has to be parallel. We expect with the Levi-Civita connection associated with the metric G, the Riemannian metric G. <clears throat> okay, that was more or less what we did yesterday. So what's the plan for today? Sorry. So the plan for today, is uh, give um, an introduction of a um, very brief introduction of Lie groups and the algebras. Then uh, in the second part, so we want to define uh, our structure we, we have from yesterday, Keller, LCK, so on, the metric, the complex structure. We want the left invariant version of and those uh, left invariant 
structures. And only group. And at the end of the lecture today, uh, we will see some fact about soul manifolds. We will see the definition actually. So manifolds and uh, some examples. And finally, on Thursday, yeah, we will discuss more about uh, non result and open problem. I will mention something today at the end. So that's the plan for today. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so let me start uh, the first part, which is the groups and the algebras. As I, as I said yesterday, so if you have some question or comments, please interrupt me. Okay. So what's the idea again of this is just uh, a study our our property from from yesterday, and a particular class of, of manifolds. So this class given by Lie groups. So that's the definition. So Lie group G, so we denoted by G, our Lie group is a smooth manifold. With the group structure. Such that there are two conditions that we have to satisfy. So we have a product in our group. So this product has to be put send, send G time at G H to G time H and has to be smooth. And the inversion from G to G sending G to G minus one. So what we have here is just uh, a manifold as, as yesterday, but also we have a group structure. And we want to exploit this um, extra property. So what's the easy example of a group? Well, you can take GL and R, so matrices, inverted matrix of dimension N of the, the reals, and the product is just the multiplication of matrices matrices, right? <clears throat> okay, so now let me say what the algebra is. Sorry. Let me define a Lie algebra. Algebra with the reals. So it's a real vector space the real vector space together with with linear operator which is the Lie bracket going from G so I will denote the Lie algebra by this uh, gothic G. From G times G to G. Sorry. G and such that there are two properties. So X, Y is minus Y, X. So it's Q symmetric. Symmetric and the second property is the Jacobi identity. This uh, cyclic sum that had to be zero. So X, Y, Z plus Y, Z. 
x plus cell sorry cell x y this has to be zero for any x y and z in your vector space so that's the definition of uh, the algebra <clears throat> And okay, example. So here, in this example, it's just if you take a uh, GL and R, so any matrix, and the D bracket. So this guy is called the D bracket. D bracket. And the D bracket here is just the commutator. So you can check that this is Q symmetric and satisfy the Jacobi identity. Okay. So let me do some remarks. <clears throat> so the first one is that, sorry, is uh, just to mention that uh, every Lie group has an associated Lie algebra. So every D group G has an associated D algebra. So for any G, we can define somehow this gothic G. And it's usually denoted by D of, of the group G. So the Lie algebra of of the group G. And how we define the G? Well, one way is just uh, by the set of left invariant, left invariant vector fields. So be the group G, you take the set of uh, left invariant vector fields and in, in that set, uh, you can define a, a Lie bracket. I will do it in a minute, but first, let me recall what, what the left invariant vector field means. So take two points in your group. <clears throat> and we have the LQ, which is a map running, going from G to G. That's the left multiplication. So you take uh, point P, this is just uh, Q, P. So multiplication on the left by Q. So that's LQ. So we can take the derivative of LQ at some point, let's say P. And this is going from TPG to TPG. Sorry, to T uh, LQ. P, so the tension space of G at the point uh, U, P. And X, uh, the vector field, it's called left invariant. Invariant if satisfy this property. So let me explain what this means. So you have your vector field X at the point P. You take the derivative of, of LQ. So this is a map you see here, going to TPG to TQPG, right? So what? This vector field, so this guy has to be exactly your vector field in the endpoint, right? QP. So that's the property of left invariant vector fields. Okay. So that's the set uh, G, the Lie algebra. So we still have to say what's the Lie bracket uh, G is. So 
daily bracket g is daily bracket daily bracket so the daily bracket of vector field you have in the in any manifold vector field But just if you don't remember exactly what it means, so anytime you have two vector fields, um, you want to define the Lie bracket between them. So remember, it uh, has to be applied to functions. And the definition of the of the new uh, vector field in the function is just the derivative of this guy minus gp yp in x and f. So f is a function in your, in your manifold. But that's the definition of the Lie bracket of vector fields. And we defined our Lie algebra as a set of left invariant vector fields. So in particular, we can apply this Lie bracket to the Lie algebra. So, we have our G with this D bracket. So this is a Lie algebra. So that's why uh, how we induce to any group uh, a Lie algebra. The other uh, remark I want to mention is that uh, you can also identify a Lie algebra of a given Lie group just as the tangent space of your group at the identity, right? So I think it's, it's clear from the definitions. So we define G as the set of left invariant vector fields. So we have a left invariant vector fields with this property that, uh, so it's completely determined, determined by a value of any chosen point. So in particular, you can choose the, the point at the identity. So if we identify a left invariant vector field, what um, its value at the identity. So this is the identification of G as a tangent uh, space of, of the group G at the identity. Okay. Um, let me continue. So the last remark is that uh, any connected and uh, simply connected. connected. D group G. So we already uh, have seen that from the Lie group, you have your Lie algebra, but now we are saying that uh, any simply connected Lie group is completely determined determined by its Lie algebra. So there is a simply connected condition, right? Lie algebra. Of course, apply some of this. In general, so there is this result that I'm given two groups, D group, simply connected and connected, simply connected. Oops. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the their Lie algebras are isomorphic, so with isomorphic Lie algebras, let's say D of G is isomorphic to D of H. So then G is isomorphic to H. 
So what the, this result says is that um, there is an identification, uh, actually one-to-one -one correspondence between simply connected and simply connected um, groups. And the algebras. So, what's the idea? Again, is try to to go from our geometric property in in the Lie group, just to translate this uh, property to the Lie algebra, and trying to study the geometry there. So what's the, the advantage of this is yeah, normally study things at the Lie algebra level is much easier. This is just uh, linear algebra. Okay, but in order to do that, so I need to, to do this, uh, I mean, formally introduce how to pass from a structure in your group to a structure on the Lie algebra. So we are going to the second part of the talk today. So it's about left, sorry, left invariant, left invariant structures, only groups. So the first things is about the metric, so definitions. So a Riemannian metric G. So my problem here with the G of the metric and the G of the Lie algebra. But yeah, that's the metric. The metric G on a Lie group. G. So it's called left invariant left invariant if G in X, Y at the point P is the same that G of D LQ, LQ, so Y. So this is in the point LQ, P. So what does it mean? So, so here we have our vector of Y and X and Y, and we take the derivative of the left multiplication LQ. And in other words, it means that the left multiplication, the Q, left multiplication, are isometries. That was uh, what this um, condition means. So the left multiplication, the Q, have to be an isometries. Remark about this definition. So if you see the, the definition is clear that the, the metric is completely determined by its value in, in only one point. So we can choose the identity as that, uh, at that point, so G, is determined, it's determined by its value at the identity of the group. So E denotes the identity of our group. So there is an, an identification of, of, the, of the metric G with an inner product. But 
that's the metric, the metric in, in our group, and an inner product at the identity. So at the tangent space of, of, of group G at the identity, which is actually our Lie algebra. So what I'm trying to say here is that left invariant metrics on our group are in correspondence with inner products on its Lie algebra. So that's the, the first step. So we will study not any metric in our group, but just the left invariant ones. So anytime we have a left invariant metric, we can induce um, inner product in our Lie algebra and the other way around. Starting from an inner product in, in your Lie algebra, then you can construct by this definition a left invariant metric in your group. So now we want to do more or less the same with the complex structure. So complex structure J on our group is called F invariant. Left invariant if and uh, the left multiplication, the left multiplication of Q are holomorphic. What means this that uh, they commute with the complex structure? So we have our let's say. So DLQ, that's the derivative of the left multiplication at a certain point P. So this is in the tangent space of QP. So if you apply J QP, makes sense. And it has to be exactly the same that starting with GP and then DLQ. That means that the left multiplication uh, LQ is uh, holomorphic. And if this happens for any left multiplication, your complex structure is left invariant. And again, again, so here J left invariant is determined by its value. So maybe yeah, the picture has to understand. So we have TPG, TPG. Uh, we want to define J in that point P, going from TPG to TPG, and we have the tangent space at the identity, which is the algebra, and again here. Right, so here we have the complex structure and the identity, and from here to there, we can go with the left transaction by P. So LP, and you take the derivative of F at the identity. So this div in TPG, the same here. So how you I need to define G at the point P, it's just making this uh, commutative, right? So DLP minus one, JE, and then DLP. So as you see, so G, the, sorry, J, the complex structure is completely determined by its value and the identity. And one more things about uh, 
is uh, J. So it's just, I think I already mentioned, I said complex structure, but I never defined what the complex structure means at Bailey algebra. So complex structure G. It's just uh, something going from the algebra itself. Linear linear map such that J square is minus the identity of the Lie algebra. And again, this uh, condition, this integrability condition, right? Well, it could be some minus plus error, but I think that's fine. But, but but now this is just a condition on, on, on our vector space G. There are not vector fields in all uh, in our group. They are just vector at the tangent space of the identity. So that's what the complex structure means at the Lie algebra level. So again, very similar to what we have for metrics. So we have a, an identification of um, left invariant complex structure on G, as we defined yesterday. I mean, complex structure, left invariant means that these maps are holomorphic. So any left invariant complex structure in your group can be identified with just complex structure. G in your Lie algebra. Okay. Now, uh, before continuing with the with the Hermitian metric and the fundamental form, so let me just uh, say something about this complex things. So here everything is is surreal. So the Lie algebra is over the real. The Lie group is a real group, but could be also that we have complex Lie group and complex Lie algebra. So a real um, Lie algebra with the complex structure as we define this page with the complex structure. It's not necessary a complex a complexly algebra. I mean a Lie algebra over over C. That's what I mean with complex Lie algebra over C. Right? So we need an extra condition. So the extra condition is uh, it's only happened if your your structure satisfies this condition. J of the Lie bracket X and Y has to be X J Y. Within general, this is not true. So if you have a complex structure in your Lie algebra such that this condition is satisfied, then you can construct uh, a structure of complex uh, Lie algebra in your real vector space. That's the thing. And the same happened for, for Lie groups. So in general, a real Lie group with the complex structure. Sorry, with the complex structure. I think it's confusing because we define complex Manifold, and let me just explain this. It's not necessary a complex Lie group. So first, what complex Lie group uh, means, so here is just the product in, in your group and the inversion in, in your group, both together like this has to be 
holomorphic. So that's the definition of complex Lie group. So what I said that if you have a real Lie group with a complex structure, it's not necessarily complex Lie group. So again, it's only happened if the condition above is satisfied. It's only happened if the complex structure satisfies this extra property. So for Lie groups, yeah, it's a mess because we have G, a group, which is a real manifold. So that's the idea. And we define what the complex structure is. And as, as we saw yesterday, <clears throat> so this induces a structure of complex manifold. So G is a complex manifold. But it's not necessarily a complex Lie group. So this product G H minus one is not necessarily holomorphic. That's, so this thing make, uh, says that on that G is only a real Lie group, but not necessary complex Lie group. It only happens so this uh, so it it is a complex Lie group if and only if your complex structure has a very particular uh, form. Otherwise, it's just a complex manifold, but as a group, it's a real Lie group. Okay, that was uh, a side remark. So let me continue with the definition of left invariant structures. <clears throat> so what we have so far is an, an identif identification of uh, Hermitian structure left invariant. Hermitian structure. So we already defined G uh, and J left invariant. So Hermitian G. And they are completely determined by inner product and complex structure, we call permission again, if they satisfy the, the compatibility condition, right? So left invariant structure in your group correspond with permission structures on the Lie algebra. So that's the Lie algebra associated to uh, your group. <clears throat> okay. So, a couple of definitions. So, a left invariant permission structure. G. It's called um, left invariant LCK. If satisfy, I mean, if it is LCK. So if um, it uh, satisfy, if it is LCK. So if satisfy the omega equal to theta h omega. So it's a. Uh, What I'm trying to say is just we will call left invariant LCK if it is LCK and the Hermitian structure is left invariant. So in this case, so first let me do a remark. So G, J, left invariant. So what we have to prove is that the fundamental form and the Lie form are left invariant. And, and the idea 
I think it's, it's very simple. So if you remember the fundamental form is just defined using the metric and the complex structure. So if your metric or your complex structure are left invariant, so it's easy to prove that omega is left invariant. Left invariant. And for the leaf form, um, it's a bit more complicated, but if you remember the formula, so 2n is the dimension of the manifold, this star is the co-differential operator, that's the fundamental form of the complex structure. So again, you can see, you can prove that if J is left invariant, we already said that the fundamental form is also left invariant, taking the co-differential doesn't matter. So keep the left invariance. So theta turn out to be also left invariant. <clears throat> So what it says, it says that if your metric or your complex structure is uh, R left invariant, so that's enough in order to define uh, left invariant locally conformally Keller in, in your Lie algebra. That's what we are about to, to do. So definition. Inner product, complex structure. G is called LCK, locally conformally Keller, if the same condition that we have for manifold is satisfied, right? But but here there are different objects because we are we have only a vector space. So omega lived in lambda two of G star and theta is just in G star. And of course, close, right? So here, D is just the exterior derivative. So from P forms to P plus one. So that's the definition of LCK at the Lie algebra level. And again, as we have for metrics and complex structure. So we can identify left invariant, LCK structures um, on your group. So every time you have a left invariant LCK structure, it means the metric is left invariant, the complex structure, and this is enough to determine a, a fundamental form and a leaf form, which are also left invariant. So they are one-to-one uh, -one correspondent with LCK structures and G. So here we have inner products. And J is just a linear map from G to G. And the fundamental form we use it by permission structure and the leaf form. So that's the idea. Instead of studying uh, left invariant, locally conformally Keller metrics on a Lie group, so you can identify this structure with easier structure on your Lie algebra, and you will start to study things, property, whatever there, examples, and then translate everything to our group. That's the main idea. So work here, study properties that come from your, your manifold. Okay. What now? Uh, oh yeah, just a remark. So of course I did this uh, left invariant identification just for for uh, locally conformity Keller metric, but you can pick uh, you can pick any structure you want. Uh, 
an automatic structure. Structure, simplex structure, I mean, Taylor, whatever you want, and do exactly the same. Right, so take the the left inverse yeah, left invariant version of your favorite structure on your group, and then in this uh, the linear version of your problem, linear version of your structure structure. So this is not uh, something just for locally conformal IKEA. So again, as I said, what the, the advantage of this, I think I already mentioned, but uh, if we to recall, so work, uh, working here is much easier. than G, right? So here is is more or less linear algebra. So for instance, we will see at the end of, of, of the lecture today or probably on Thursday that the style our property of being uh, locally conformally Keller is really much easier at the at the Lie algebra level. Of course, we are only focusing on left invariant locally conformally together. But as in life, you also have advantage and disadvantage. This uh, advantage, I will mention, mention probably two. So um, at least for, for LCK, one of and of the disadvantage is that if you start with a strict um, locally conformally Keller structure, so remember, strict was locally conformally Keller, which is not globally conformable. Keller. So if we start with this in our Lie algebra, not globally. So it's just a condition dimension. So we study property examples wherever, and then we induce. So the left and uh, invariant structure in, in our group on G. But what happened if G? So normally, if you start with the Lie algebra, then you take the simply connected uh, Lie group associated to, to your to your Lie algebra. So if G is simply connected, simply connected, so with Lie algebra G. So the problem is, uh, if G is simply connected, then the LCK structure is actually global. If you remember from yesterday, so when we define the, the condition of being LCK, so we said, okay, if theta is exact, then this is actually a globally conformally Keller structure. And this is the case if uh, G is simply connected. So we lost our a strictness uh, property. So that's the real uh, disadvantage of taking this uh, simply connected Lie groups. And possibly other disadvantages that sometimes you want uh, compact examples. Sometimes uh, you want compact examples of whatever you are studying. In our case, locally conformally Keller structure, but uh, so we need to say something in order to try to fix these two issues. So, what's a, a possible solution for this? Well, uh, lattices. So, lattices 
let me introduce what, what lattice is what lattice is so definition so a lattice lattice gamma in G is a discrete um, subgroup of G such that the Gaussian is compact. So that's a solution if you want a compact example. So probably your group is, is not compact, but if you are able to find lattices, which is not easy, then you can induce, uh, we will see with more detail, but if you have your structure in your group, somehow you can induce your structure to, to the Gaussian G over G mod gamma. And um, what I want to say, okay, uh, what about the other problem of, of, uh, of being simply connected? Well, so if you have, if you have one of these uh, quotients, so with G simply connected, simply connected, so what's the fundamental group of the coach? Well, this is isomorphic to the lattice. Uh, what is important, so it means that it's not simply connected anymore. Not simply connected. So if you start, in our case, if you start with an LCK strict, well, at least it's not immediately now that it doesn't imply that it's globally conformally. So somehow uh, we fix also that, that problem. But again, if you are able to find lattices. Um, well, what about an example of this uh, quotient? So if you start with Rn, and you take just uh, the integers. So this is a torus. And dimensional, and dimensional torus. So we will try to do um, the same for, for some groups. So we study our geometric property in the group, and then try to find lattices in order to have compact examples and examples where our structure is it's really strict. Um, okay, maybe one more comment. So, comment definition. I don't know. So, if G is a solvable Lie group, a solvable Lie group, so, and if admit the lattice, of course, so the quotient. G mod gamma is called sol manifold. Sol manifold. And uh, if G is uh, nilpotent, is the nilpotent group. So the quotient is a nil manifold. So then we will see examples of locally conformally killer uh, structure, so manifold and nil manifolds. So just in case. Uh, if you are not familiar with the nil potent of solvable group, so um, the algebra, the algebra G is nil potent if satisfy the following condition. So you take the commutator of G G 
this is called G sub one. And then you start the lower central series. So you define J, so G, sorry, um, J plus one, just as the bracket between everything against the previous one. So this series going in that way. So it that if at some point this is zero, so your Lie algebra, if the lower central series vanish, your Lie algebra uh, it's called Lie potent. And G is solvable. So the definition is similar. This is a weaker condition. So we call this G upper one. And then we define again G and J plus one as the commutator between the previous, not against everything, but against the J. And here again, if this uh, series vanish at some point, so your the algebra is called solvable. And the step of solvability um, of the potency is just the previous step where, where this guy is different from zero. So if j plus one is zero, so it's case j step main potent or j step solvable. So examples. So you can take for solvable, solvable. So you can think about uh, matrices. So upper triangular with, with something in the diagonal and zero here, they are solvable. And if you want nil potent, just think about. Uh, Strict upper triangular with zeros in the diagonal. And of course, the Lie bracket is just the, the commutator. I mean, for matrices. Okay, that was just a comment about uh, solver and nilpotent. Let me come back to, to the original plan. So, it's how to define. Uh, so, this, so we already see that uh, from your from our Lie group, studying locally conformary Keller or whatever structure you want, is in correspondence with the study this property at the Lie algebra. But now we define lattices and, and the question would be, okay, how is the, the structure in our case, how is the, the locally conformally Keller structure? How is the locally conformally Keller structure? Now, um, Gaussian manifold, right? So we didn't mention anything about that. And we have this uh, result. So if G and meets left invariant LCK structure. My CK structure. Um, then we can induce this is an LCK structure G So the idea, the idea of this is is because the structure is left invariant. So we have the Natural projection from G to the quotient. So look at this here. And I think you already imagine how we will define the structure and the quotient. So on G, we have the metric, complex structure, fundamental form, whatever. And how we will induce this, uh, let me call G tilde, J tilde. So the, the induced structure 
from the ocean. So we will define this, uh, for example, the metric will be just, okay, how is the metric on, on a point, I mean, on a vector in the, in the quotient? So you can see that the vector is just differential of, of, the, of the local projection applied to, to a vector in your, in your group. So we want that this G tilde in those two guys is exactly the same that G in X and Y. Um, very similar with the with the comp structure. So we want to define the comp structure in the image of some guy. It's just copy what G do in that guy. And then uh, apply, sorry. So here is a bit different. So we have G of X makes sense, but this is a, in our group. So we need to go with the differential of pi. So you can you can check that uh, with that definition, the permission structure G tilde, J tilde is well defined. It's well defined and um, if you ask compatibility, I mean, if you ask Hermitian structure on G and left and uh, locally conformally Keller, this induce a locally conformally Keller structure on the code. The idea is it's very simple. So what we need to uh, pay attention here is Every time you have a left invariant structure on your group, well, by this way, you can induce an LCK structure structure on your caution. So this structure on your caution is called invariant. I mean, it doesn't make sense uh, talking about the invariance in the caution, but it's not a group, for example, but uh, it's just to, to emphasize that come from a left invariant structure in your group. Okay, so just there were a lot of definitions. So just to, to remark what's the important things and just to, to emphasize the idea. So the final idea is just we want to, to study locally conformally Keller structure on this uh, quotient, G mood gamma, right? For G, uh, for example, solvable Lie group, let's say. So we we saw that okay, locally conformally Keller structure on your group. If they are left invariant, left invariant induce locally conformally Keller structure on the quotient. So instead of focusing on, on the quotient, okay, we try to to study left invariant locally conformally Keller structure on G, but they are in correspondence with locally conformally Keller structures, SK structure on the Lie algebra. So that's the, the, the general idea. So we will study things here because it's exactly the same that, that doing at the Lie group if, if you're only focusing on left invariant. And with this uh, method, we, we can induce a structure in the compact manifold. So that's uh, how we will construct examples, study property, just at the Lie algebra level. Okay, so more or less, so this is the, the, the first part of, of the work normally. So study stuff here. And then the second part of the work, I mean, there is nothing to do to induce the structure, but the problem here is how to find this uh, discrete subgroups. So the second part of the story here is just the problem of, of existences of lattices. Let me just uh, write down 
as I said, so the, the object is the aim. So normally the first part is just to study properties like LCK, for instance. But I focus on this structure, but you can pick any structure you want. Structures on G, daily algebra. So here you can find examples, I don't know, properties. Uh, Try to classify the algebra with some structure for some for low dimensions, whatever you imagine. And the second part is just the existence of lattices. Lattice. And that normally is it's, it's very hard. There are not too many results about. Uh, there are not criterion for the existences of lattices. There are some results. Let me mention something. For instance, Milner in 76, he proved that uh, if G admits lattices, admits lattices, then G is unimodular. What it means, uh, at least for for connected, if G is connected, G is connected. Fitly group, uh, unimodular. It's equivalent means that the trace of the operator adjoint of X has to be zero for any element in your real chain. So here there is a, a condition, at least your group has to be unimodular, but this condition is not enough. It's not an if and only if. It goes just in one way, <clears throat> but that's in general for any G. But then there are some results, not too, too many, but there are some, for instance, what's happened when G is nilpotent. So Malchev in, I guess, prove that if G is nilpotent, if nilpotent, uh, G admit that this is, sorry, that this is, if and only if, so here we have a criterion, the Lie algebra, Admit a uh, basis with rational structure constant. So for nilpotent D group, uh, it's easier. I mean, at least there is a criterion uh, in order to, to find lattices. But uh, but in general, if G is solvable, uh, there is no criteria. Of existences of, of lattices. Okay, um, let me finish, or try to finish uh, this lecture with, with a real example of, of everything we we have seen today. So probably the main examples of the Minikov's example. It's an example of a nil manifold. A meeting and LCK structure. So at the manifold level, we already see the Hopf manifold. Now we will see an example of, of um, algebras. Sorry. Okay.
uh, example. So let me take uh, G. So the Lie algebra is just R times H3. So H3 is the Heisenberg, the Heisenberg and the algebra. So let me take a basis. <clears throat> so A, X, Y, Z. So that's the basis of G. And the Lie bracket, that's just X and Y is Z. So A is in the center. So it belongs to the center of the field. So the brackets against A are zero. So how to work with, we need to start to define our structure. So first of all, the metric or the inner product. So it's given such that the basis, uh, what we call it, theta, such that theta is, a, is an orthonormal basis. This means that the lengths of, of the basis vector are one and they are orthogonal each other. Then the complex structure. So we need to define J. So we will do it just sending A to Z and X to Y. And since it's have to satisfy the condition that the square is minus the identity, then in Z is just minus A and in Y is minus X. You can check exercise that the integrability condition is satisfied. It's really a complex structure. So now uh, we will take uh, a basis of one forms, basis of one forms. So let me call, I don't know, um, theta, small x, y, and z. So they are the one forms dual to a, x, y, z. So what means dual, for instance, I don't know, theta in a is zero. So theta is dual of a, and then theta is, is zero in the other guys. So that's what dual means. Okay, so now uh, we have the second fundamental form. And you can see that omega in this case is just theta wedge z plus x wedge y. And we want to prove that it's locally conformally killer. So we need to take the derivative of omega and see if it is a multiple of omega by theta. So let me recall in general. If you have an, an left invariant one form, so how is the, the derivative of alpha? Alpha is a one form, so you need to evaluate it into vector. And this is just minus alpha, the Lie bracket of u and b, right? So with this uh, definition, you can prove that derivative of theta is zero. So theta is closed, same with x, because there are not Lie brackets. So um, D of a one form is different from zero if, if the dual vector is in the, in the commutator. And the only guy in the commutator in our Lie algebra is just Z. So dy is also zero. And to see what this set is, okay, we need to evaluate it in two vector, but the only possibility is just x and y. Because the only way to get z is with the Lie bracket of x and y. So this is minus small x, which uh, small y. So now with this information, we can compute the omega. So this is d theta is zero. Then you have um, dx, so it's minus theta 
weight dx, so minus minus is plus. So that's uh, the thing we have. And then plus dx, which is zero, and dy, which is also zero, so that is false. But it's the same that if we do theta weight, this guy plus, again, this one, because the weight of theta and theta is zero, and this is exactly omega. So here we have the omega equal to theta weight omega. So indeed, this, uh, this structure determine a locally conformally color structure on our Lie So this inner product we define with the complex structure is an LCK structure on our Lie Okay, first part done. So we will we we found a locally conformally color structure in our Lie algebra. So the second part of the problem, I mean, is just how is the induced structure in our group. So the simply connected Lie group associated to to our Lie algebra is just R time the Heisenberg Lie group. So this G is an important. And H3 is a group, is just a set of three by three matrices with A, B, C, and zero here with A, B, C reals. And then we have to define, or we, we have to find actual lattices in this group in our group G, in order to define compact examples and have uh, having a structure in, in the quotient. So to find lattices of G, since it's a direct product, we only need to focus on lattices on the Heisenberg Lie group, and they are well understood. So gamma, let me call gamma three, has to be a subgroup of this guy and discrete, so A, B, and C are integer. So this gamma three is a lattice in H3. And our final manifold, so it's just G for the lattice. Now what is the lattice? Okay, we have a lattice in, in H3, which is extended by Z. So R time H3 quotient by R time gamma 3. So that's the idea. So this is isomorphic to R quotient, sorry, set here times A3 gamma 3. I mean, as a manifold, this is just S1. So this is a compact manifold. Actually, it's, it's a nil manifold because the, our group is important. Manifold. It's a nil manifold, and uh, it's have a particular name. M is known as the Kodaira Thurston. Dyra Thurston Manifold. Okay. Um, just to finish uh, this, so this is a really important example. Very mark. So it was. The first example of manifold, of compact manifold, <clears throat> compact symplectic manifold. <clears throat> symplectic manifold, <clears throat> manifold. 
need any color metric. So you see, maybe you think that, okay, we are just uh, working on a very particular family of manifolds, so quotient of the group by lattices, but they were used a lot to, as a counterexample or to study properties. So you can do a lot with with uh, with the groups, <clears throat> as you see in this uh, in this remark. And let me just mention a few more things. So this example we see is just in dimension four because it's h three times r. It can be it can be generalized can be generalized to any even dimension, generalized to R time H to M plus one. So very similar what we did, you can do it for any even dimension. And our example also satisfy uh, this property that the leaf form is parallel. So actually it's not just an LCK structure, so uh, it is a Weissman structure. It's a Weissman man. The example we saw it's a Weissman. And I will finish with, with this uh, with this conjecture. So uh, where the prove that uh, if you have a caution a nil manifold g mod gamma with g nil potent nil manifold dimension six so six dimension uh, nil manifold g mod gamma and meeting um, an lck structure where j is uh, left invariant then your group, your nilpotent D group, is um, R times H5. So the five-dimensional Heisenberg uh, D group. So at least in dimension six, there are not other uh, examples of nil manifold, so nilpotent D group by a function, by a lattice with an LCK structure. If you assume your complex structure is invariant, and he make a conjecture. So any 2m plus 2 dimensional nil manifold, nil manifold uh, with an LCK structure. So here we are not assuming uh, not necessary not necessary uh, invariant. So he made the conjecture for any LCK structure. And the conjecture said, okay, the only example is again, G has to be diffeomorphic to the 2M plus one dimensional Heisenberg group times R. So in general, this conjecture is, is open, is worth uh, proved. So it's true if you assume J left invariant, for instance. So in this case, if J is left invariant, so so Y in, in 27, he proved that it's true. And uh, it's also true for Weissman structure. I mean, if you add, this extra condition of uh, the new form being parallel. So the conjecture is also true. This was proved by uh, Giovanni Bazzoni in uh, 17. So yeah, yeah, I was just trying to say that our example is really important in this uh, locally conformally killer geometry. Okay. So we are almost done. So I think I will stop here. Thank you.
Oh, thank you very much. Very interesting result. Okay, any question? All right, thank you.